Uh, hello there, this is Anton from Beast in Black. Alright, just working, like busy. Yeah. <laughs> My life is just Beast in Black, so... Always working on Beast in Black, so it's not boring and... I like it that way, all the time, basically. Working on the album and anything related to Beast in Black. Like the long, long term future, basically, that's always in sight when planning things and working on things. You know, always get to think of a few steps uh, forward. <coughs> As always, when it comes to album making, the songs, songs are a selection of old material I've done in the past and some new. So it's a combination of that. And I, I think it was in the beginning of 2020 or so when the song list was kind of finalized. And then I started to work on the lyrics. It took way too long time. And then in the summer, the recording started in 2020. And there was all kinds of technical like challenges to make it happen. And so it was really all in all until this day, it's been what one year and eight months, roughly more or so. Because if I would have to count in like how much it took time to also compose the songs, and well, it usually doesn't take much like a few days per song or sometimes less, sometimes a bit more. But we are still working on some music videos. And to me, it's connected to the album, so it's still kind of not ready to me. Yeah. The, the whole picture, then there's the stage production for the tour and all that stuff. To me, it's one big continuum, so the album is still not finished. Yeah. Well, but, but, but the audio side is completed, yeah. <laughs> at least. A good song to me is a song when you can already hear the main, like the essence of the song in acoustic form. Basically, you grab a guitar and play the chords and sing the main melody, the chorus melody, for example, on top of it. If it sounds good, if something resonates in you, yeah, there is something here. Then it's a, then you have good ingredients for a song. That's what I meant by yeah. that. And, and that's how I basically build most of my songs that they have to work on that level, like on that extremely simple level. So, and then you just put layers and layers on top of that. You add other instruments, keyboards, and some instrumental parts here and there sometimes. So it's not just the vocal melody and the chords, but that's the main thing because we are doing music with vocals. Yeah. So that's the thing that has to work first and after that comes the instrumental parts if you want to add some additional parts and songs but yeah. usually there's like one main riff guitar riff or synth riff as the instrumental part yeah but songs like highway to mars there's quite a long uh, instrumental part in that song after the second chorus and we think it still works even though it's quite a long song with instrumental things and so forth but yeah, I guess life it will be a little break for Yanis at least. Yeah, yeah, I think he wants more of these instrumental <laughs> parts in the future. And yeah. I usually compose everything as complete as possible. That's my way of working. And after that, we just did it the same way, like we record. And during the recording process, Yanis always has some additional ideas how to make some chorus a bit like fatter sounding, adding some harmonies or unisons, stuff like that. It's been like since the first album and it was no uh, e exception this time either. Yeah. So he did like some additions there, how to like strengthen the melody yeah. like, in choruses. Usually it's the choruses like to add more meat around the bone, so to speak. <laughs> As a composer, I've touched maybe 0.1% of all the things I want to do with music. It's such a huge playground that 
I can't wait on to try like different approaches of composing. Like, okay, you have only four tracks, like four instruments, you cannot use any anymore, and you have to work with that. That would be exciting to me. I love musical challenges. It's never like a challenge that's uncomfortable. It's always a high musical challenge, and it's I'm so enthusiastic about that. And there's a drive that just becomes even harder. That it drives me on to do it, and until the song is complete, okay. And when it's done, I'm usually pretty happy. Okay, yes, I did it, and then. And then I just want to repeat it, like another song with a different approach, maybe. That, that's the best thing in life to compose, write songs. And but any creative uh, activity is actually like close to my heart, like writing or in in this album's production, the music videos. Mm, we've had much more input in the music videos than ever before. And that's been really exciting to like put so much effort into those, and it's a huge creative process with a uh, much bigger team than just making an album. So that that also kind of uh, feeds the hunger, so to speak. I'm an observer basically by nature. I'm just curious about these uh, things in artistic world, things that I don't fully understand. But there's a chance for me to be closer and to see how things are done. Um, just to be part of the creative process and look at it, that's curi cu curious nature. Like, yeah. That's the thing. It's just, well, it's not like, okay, I, I now remember this thing from that video and we have to like utilize this thing in this next one. It, it's something that just goes into you, into your system, and then you have the ability. And when a situation comes, when you need that ability, then it, you know that oh, it's in, inside of you. You remember the know-how inside you. Then you just start using that know-how in the future project or whatever you're doing there, like video or song or uh, color art or whatever creative process. So it's not like I remember everything what I learned there. It's just, yeah. it's like in school, you know, you learn many things in school and you use them for the rest of your life. You don't remember what was the, like, what was the date? What was the uh, class? Was it the third class in elementary school when I learned this thing? And yeah. <laughs> it's just something that you learn along the way. And then you use those skills. We try to make a video that's more movie like kind of a short film so it's not a typical uh, band plays in the video thing so we don't play at all in it I mean instruments we don't play the instruments nor sing we just have our roles there and it was a, a huge process to make the script uh, Katri Koppanen wrote the script uh, I had a little bit of input there as well in the script and she directed it. it it's her first like real direction like debut as a director and that was something we're really excited about it's new for her it's new for us to do something like in on in this scale this kind of a massive video and everyone uh, did so much work in this, especially Katri, she did the most. Started last year already, like before summer, she started to work on it, like writing the script and all. And it, it's uh, and it still follows the song, of course. It, the main thing was to make a story that correlates with the lyrics of the song, and it does perfectly. Um, there's something 80s, 90s, obviously, because it's heavily influenced by Blade Runner, the film, the original, and Armitage the Third. It's an anime from 1995. So, and a little bit of uh, Battle Angel Alita, that anime as well. So, those three were the main kind of 
influences for the lyric lyrics and the story and the visuals for the video um, when it was ready of course everyone was so exhausted um, especially like Katri she, she's done the biggest work and and it's kind of a well let's see what happens when it's out we are also like when you spend such a long time in something just one thing you start to kind of lose your objectivity yeah you don't know you cannot tell good from bad or anything but it's the same with making the album i never listen to my albums that i've composed after they're ready i can't it's just horrible yeah i hear it that is, you hate them afterwards yeah, I, I don't really <laughs> well, i don't hate the songs but like how they turn out to be i just hear all the mistakes that i've done yeah but that's a horrible way of doing promotion like I mean, the bad <laughs> things about the album but that's like like honest god that's the truth but it doesn't mean i'm not proud of it or that i don't stand behind the songs no no i do stand 100 percent behind everything that's every note that's recorded there and it's not artists uh, uh, job to basically speak about it or tell what it is it's out of my hands it's out of bands like hands it's only for the public then to do the interpretation what it gives them that's the purpose of uh, any form of art was it 2018 when I kind of had decided okay it's gonna be the cyberpunk stuff so three years ago so that was usually at the end of whatever album is on the making at the end of the particular album that's on the making I start to get the kind of kind of a clear direction what the next one is going to be even the, the one that you're working on is not fully finished yet so it's always happening like this for me i don't know why it's something like i said earlier you gotta always have the few steps forward to the future yeah. and it happens automatically now i also kind of know what the fourth album is the direction is gonna be even though the third one this one dark connection isn't out even yet yeah but that's how it goes it's when you give everything to what you've done and if you don't have anything to wait for in the future like work-wise art-wise then you lose the motivation but this gives purpose to carry on like okay you have something new to achieve to do something good um, yeah. it's meant to kind of provoke thought like when you look at the album cover there's different types of connections it can be physical uh, or metaphorical or like emotional whatever you come up with that's the that's art's point that, that's what i meant that the interpretation there's no wrong interpretation for art it, every viewer and listener makes their own interpretation and it's right for them if it gives them something then the art has done its like job its purpose if it leaves no thought or uh, leaves no impact for the viewer or listener then it hasn't worked fine but if you read the lyrics and look at the picture and then you start to see like okay it can be this type of a connection what the dark connection means at least to me it felt so strong the title when I came up with it I thought the connection was the kind of key word but then I thought it's not just connection I had to color it I hate to use the word dark it's so cliche all the Hollywood films and the sequels <laughs> dark this dark that but I had to make an exception to myself to like allow myself to use it it just felt so right and I checked that there hasn't been at least any well-known bands with that title yeah. for the album so I thought okay we'll use that because it speaks up it gives the kind of right vibe there's the atmosphere from it's not just connection but connection between the you know the main songs deal with humans and 
androids and gynoids like relationship between them in the future and that's the thing in cyberpunk as well like where do we draw the line like ethics ethics wise for example how to treat uh, the machines or are they machines are they more humans than humans themselves and if some humans and those like androids and gynoids if there's some connections between can they be treated in the same way or not all these moral questions and what not like there's connection between that yeah in those relations and it's becoming maybe reality more and more in japan the robotics are really sophisticated and like super high-tech and they want to be the lead leaders in the robotics in the in the world and i think that's the world uh, that's the country where we will first like i think they will if from any country there will be like a market for this kind of really sophisticated actual uh, androids and gynoids like robots basically it's that country yeah where actually. they will come from it's not so black and white there's always these gray areas it can be good and it can be bad it depends how you use that kind of a uh, asset or like it's all about how we like uh, use technology for example even like weapons guns in themselves they are not evil or bad but how we use them it makes them like kind of a tools for good or for evil but mm, yeah this, this is a topic that at least that provokes thought definitely like because everything is starting to become so easy like especially in city life you know just push button here and there and things are automatically done and like yeah i, I don't want to get <laughs> too deep into this too many thoughts rush like into my brain i cannot find a correct output for. <laughs> well, i just like wrote the songs and listen to the songs what they need in my opinion and i just put the keyboards like where they were needed of course that can be debated like <laughs> some might say that man you should just mute all the keyboards from this part and all that stuff like but yeah i do lo love keyboards quite quite a lot this italo disco and eurobeats uh, eurobeat style from uh, late and mid 90s and early 2000s i didn't have any like okay i must use this keyboard it's just when i hear a sound hey this <laughs> sound fits to this part of, of of that song and that's it so i didn't have any like kind of uh, decision beforehand to use certain like tool yeah it's just what the song needs what the songs need and that's it all the uh, voiceovers are from animes high white mars has also the beginning uh, voiceover is from armitage the third from the first episode and revengeance machine that is from Cyber City 080808 from the first episode. That I think that's my favorite kind of dialogue from the whole series. One, at least one of the favorites. There's some other really nice dialogues, but that was so spot on. Like the guy is blaming the machine there that the whole city is out of control because of that. But then the machine responds, "Well, machines are." built by humans therefore they inherit humans faults so the root the source is still human being so we cannot blame the machines in that sense so that was really kind of a good point what they kind of bring up there i'm sure sure there would be uh, like 
the music would still be more or less the same and the overall feel like from the lyrics and because it's kind of the inner like feel and energy that I just again as a composer try to let out and Berserk just had to, happened to be like a that's what I found as a great output to kind of connect it to this thing that I had inside but if there wasn't Berserk it would have been something else I would have found it but I'm super happy that it was Berserk because it's it's the like best uh, manga and my all-time favorite like story uh, overall that I've uh, read and even our name the yeah, Beast in Black name wouldn't probably exist without Berserk because it came from Berserk like I just wanted to keep the word beast because of you know I felt that after uh, Battle Beast days uh, for me were over I wanted to continue the kind of the story of the beast it was kind of personal thing for me and then I thought hey there's beast of darkness in Berserk and the black swordsman so I just thought hey beast of darkness the black swordsman beast in black and I get like all in one like I get the beast word and strong like reference to Berserk like a, as a like a tribute to or paying homage to Berserk and the first album was titled Berserker in, like because of Berserk yeah so yeah so in that sense there wouldn't be the title beast in black probably without Berserk well, simply because it's uh, one of the best songs of Michael Jackson and I've loved the song since I first heard it I remember that when I got my first electric guitar I was 12 and that riff in the middle part of the song in they don't care about us song that was one one of the first riffs I played on my first electric guitars and the idea for that song I think it came in 2019 to cover it me and Yanis were talking I think it was in some backstage somewhere uh, it's simply just a good song and there was no uh, any like thought behind it to make it because of some political reasons no I don't really want to uh, be what's the word like to involved to make the beast in black involved in what's going on in the world because I noticed that many bands for example this corona thing when it started immediately so many bands started to kind of use that as an asset okay we have to be like trendy and like be aware of the situation and I thought we're gonna do the exact opposite because we want to offer people escapism to yeah. forget about the corona forget about the politics but just give something that sounds good and like colors the imagination when they listen to the songs and read the lyrics and but Michael Jackson song lyrics they are great no matter in what decade or time you listen to that song they are something th those uh, lyrics are are resonating definitely throughout time because they have so much meaning in them it's not connected to this time specifically it's good lyric always resonates and melodically that chorus is just catchy as hell like me and Janis immediately agreed that hey yeah that's gonna be like so beast in black style chorus like so it was a no-brainer almost like to choose that song that's what keeps us busy even now when the album is done basically but yeah exactly we want to make the stage look like it's connected to this to these themes somehow and let's see what happens as you said who knows if the tours happen or not we strongly hope so that they will this upcoming tours but well eventually the tours will have happen so anyway we will have to we have to be ready when that happens so even if the tours won't happen now they have, when they happen we are already ready for those if we keep working now if we're ready much more in advance it means okay then we have some months in between and we can work on new 
music videos or on the next album or the work never ends which is a great thing but thanks for for all the questions it was interesting like really like thought provoking and i hope people will check this album out check the music video out and come on tour if it happens hopefully it happens fingers crossed so thanks for everyone <laughs>